Okay, here's a question for you. What do terrifying, mysterious holes in a remote Irish forest have to do with an epidemic that occurred in a city miles from here that led to major restrictions on people's lives that destroyed an entire rural community? Well, in this video, we're about to find out. This is not a video I was expecting to make when I set out one day just trying to find a new location to make some outdoor adventure videos in the woods, but this is what happened. I stumbled across two, there's two of these terrifying holes in the woods. That goes about down 20 feet. There's water and beneath the water, you can see a rectangular stone structure. These things are terrifying. And I made a video about them, posted them online. And since then I've been inundated with all kinds of messages from different people that has allowed me to unravel the mystery a little bit more. There's all kinds of theories. Are they mine shafts? It is a secret underground bunker from World War II. Is it a toxic waste dump? Is it a portal to another dimension? All of these were things that were being suggested in comments that I've been sent since. And by the way, I am being incredibly intentionally vague about the exact location because these things are death traps. They're surrounded by barbed wire, which is now trip wire. You fall in there, you're never getting out again, and I do not want to be responsible for anybody coming up here and accidentally falling in. So if you know where this location is, please keep it vague in the comments. Now, there were a few people in particular who are really helpful at unraveling this mystery. First of all, there was Chris, who sent me a link to an interactive map where you could check out all the abandoned mine shaft and mine works in Ireland. I had a look at that, nothing, absolutely nothing in this area. Uh, so that kind of rules this out as mining operation or at least as a known mining operation. And then I had a YouTube comment that suggested maybe it could be a ventilation shaft for part of an underground conduit that used to take water to a nearby city. The water conduit doesn't go anywhere near here, not even within a couple of miles. So that rules out mine shaft and it rules out water conduit. Gary Mitchell, and Gary has been incredibly helpful, he sent me a link and said, did you know that you can check historical ordnance survey maps online? So the first thing I did was I loaded up a map from around 1905 near this hole and the other hole that looked like dwellings or houses or a farm or something like that. And today I'm gonna go and try and see if I can find them because I didn't find them last time. And then I will tell you the other really interesting thing about the map from 1905. So if you look on the map here, you can see this boundary line, this boundary wall running up. This is on a 200 year old map and right here are the remnants of that wall. It comes from that direction. There's a gap here where it's fallen down. Then it picks up here, continues that way. And there's a right angle and it goes on up into the forest, which is exactly how it matches with the map here. And if I look over in that direction, I can see what looks to be the boundary wall going that way and then continuing up. So I'm gonna walk parallel with that wall up through the forest and see what we can find. So if this is your first time on my channel, my name's Stephen, and I make outdoors adventure videos about all kinds of things, hiking, camping, cycling, whoa, paddling, whatever. So if you love the outdoors, have a look around the channel. You might find something else that you'll enjoy. And oh, oh. I'm surrounded by walls here. There's a wall there, a wall there, a wall there. It's almost like it was... Oh, oh, I think we find it. I think we find it. Oh, look at this. It's a house. It's a fireplace. There's the hearth. Chimney would have been up there. What else is around here? Window or doorway? It's mad. I'm standing in somebody's living room from who knows how long ago. This could be two, three hundred years old. Places like this always always blow my mind. I'm always curious as to what the lives of the people who lived here were like. These trees didn't exist here. It's a relatively new forest. 
So the view from these houses would have been incredible. Would have been looking down the valley across the mountains on the other side. It would have been like, what a place to live. Right, well, this confirms that the map from 1905 is at least accurate when it comes to when it comes to there being buildings nearby. And I can confirm that the buildings that were on the map near the other hole are there. I was over there earlier, I've seen them. They exist as well. So let's head over in that direction. We'll go to the second hole and I'll tell you what was really weird about that map from 1905. Right, this is the second hole I found. I think this one's more interesting. It looks like something from an Indiana Jones movie. Here's the interesting thing from that map tonight from 1905. There is zero reference to either of these holes. And then Gary sent me a message and Gary said, Stephen, you got to load up the hiker app because in the hiker app, you have the ability to load up a map from 1832. You got nearly a 200 year old map. And if you look on that map, you can see two circles near two dwellings or two structures. They don't match the GPS coordinates exactly, but it's a 200 year old map. They're really, really close. So that's got to be these holes. These have been here for at least 200 years. That predates the Great Famine, the Potato Famine in Ireland by 13 years. Back then, at that stage in history, all of Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. Uh, King William IV was on the throne and then he would be succeeded by Queen Victoria in 1937. Bye. And when the map was made nearly 200 years ago, Ireland was not in a good place. It was in the middle of a financial crisis, arguably made a lot worse by terrible political leadership. So it's good to see that a lot has changed in the last 200 years. <laughs> or perhaps not. I said I wouldn't make this video political. I'm trying not to be political. <laughs> Back then, the majority of Irish people lived in pretty much poverty. Um, they didn't own their own land. Their land was mostly owned by English landlords who didn't live here, absentee landlords, if you will. And they seemed to be a lot more interested in just extracting money from their tenants rather than their well-being. Now, that's simplifying a very complicated history, but I'm trying to keep the focus on what these holes are. Now, at this stage, I thought I'd figure this out. Holes in the ground, 200 years old, near dwellings, can only be one thing. They must be wells. Must be wells, water supply for the settlement there, another one for the settlement up there. What else could they be? So I was trying to prove my theory that these were wells and the thing that had a question mark over it was, why do they not appear in your maps? Why do they suddenly disappear on maps from 1905 onwards? So I decided, why don't I go and look and try and find other symbols, other circles on the map, and then look at the later maps and see if they're still there and see if there's any other indication. And sure enough, I found this a circle on a map. But I also noticed that just a little bit along was another circle, a smaller circle. And that's when I noticed that the original circles weren't exactly circles. There's something a little bit different about them. It was a circle, but it seemed to have a dot at the bottom of it, or like a little circle, a little sm smudge. Map makers are very careful people. They don't tend to make mistakes, smudges or any kind of, you know, mark on a map unless it has a purpose. So these are clearly two different symbols. Jump forward to 1905. Both circles are still on the map, but this time they've got letters beside them. W, well, so that makes sense. It's a well. But the other shape, LK, lime kiln. These are not wells, they're lime kilns. Way back 100 years ago, a substance that was used in loads of places was quick lime, and you got quick lime from burning limestone in a lime kiln. You put limestone on the top, the fire heated up the limestone and bro broke it down into this powder, quicklime. Quicklime was used for all kinds of things. It was used in construction, it was used for bleaching paper, it was used as a disinfectant, it was used for tanning animal hides, it was used in medicine, and it was spread on fields to improve soil quality. So it was really, really important. Now, this still leaves a really big mystery because I've seen lime kilns before and typically, they're above ground. So I'm wondering, were these lime kilns covered over at some point? Maybe there was a landslide came through here. We are on a hill. There's a, you know, the land rises up in that direction. Possibly there's a landslide. If they were filled in and covered over, that would explain why they disappeared off the maps from 1905 onward. And then I discovered this. <sighs> this 
is a lime kiln. And it's been sitting here above ground, apparently, for 200 years, the entire time. Which means that I was wrong. And uh, you've probably guessed it, but guess what I found at the other location near the other hall? I found another lime kiln above ground in full view. So I was wrong. And this entire thing has been driven by the fact that some cartographer, map maker at some point, for some reason, didn't put left lime kilns off the map. Maybe sneezed, accidentally rubbed them out. Who knows? Now I have one final theory as to what these holes are, but in order to try and get a little bit more evidence for it, I want to put a camera right down in the hole. So today I'm back with the GoPro in a dive case. GoPro is on. This is where this starts to get interesting because the first surprise I got was that it's not actually made from stone as what it looked like from above, but wooden planks or wooden beams. You can see horizontal ones and vertical ones in the corner and some kind of strange plant growing in the sides. It almost looked like seaweed or some kind of sea anemone. Oh, we got a rope tangle. This next part freaked me out a bit because I thought I could see a chair up ahead in the gloom, but it turned out it was just some sticks that were snagged on a plank. I was a bit worried the camera was going to get stuck here and it wouldn't actually make it down to the bottom, but thankfully it just about managed to slip on down through and then I could start to see the bottom. We've hit the bottom. So I don't know if this is the original bottom of this hole or if it's just collapsed in over the years, but it's as far down as I got and the bottom of it seemed to be coated with, it looked like a lot of rotting leaves and soil. So if you look really carefully right here, you can see on the side where one of the planks has collapsed and fallen in. So that did make me wonder if perhaps this hole used to be much deeper. Whoa, you can see the light lighting up the edges of the shaft down in there. Right out of the water. Okay. The second hole was interesting because first of all, it did have some stone or at least concrete beams at the start of the hole, but I almost lost the camera in here twice. First of all, the camera got snagged on a branch on the way down and it could have potentially got stuck there if it wasn't for the fact the torch came tumbling after it and knocked it off. But then I also managed to snag the line around a stump in the forest. Oh no, I'm snagged in something down there. Oh no! I'm gonna have to leave this. Oh no, 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 no. Oh! This hole wasn't as deep as the first one, and in some ways it wasn't as interesting because the water was cloudier and I couldn't see as much. Oh! We've gone slack, we're on the bottom. Right. It's quite crazy to think that I'm probably the first person to have seen what's down here in potentially over 100 years. 
And time to answer the question you've all been wondering, and that is exactly how deep did these holes go? I've got the spool of string that I used to drop the camera in. I tied a loop on it to show the depth, and I'm gonna run it down this fence to show you just how deep these things were. So, got my spool, and let's start walking. Now, the two holes were different depths. The larger hole was about this depth, pretty deep but the more narrow one it just kept going and going I think we're nearly there and going oh there we go got my loop and that distance is 20 meters or 65 feet the narrower hole was deeper than a house in fact it was deeper than two two-story houses stacked on top of each other. And that depth is the final bit of evidence I needed to confirm what I think these holes are. And we'll get to that in a second. But first of all, let's discuss the mystery as to why these settlements were abandoned in the first place. Back in the late 1800s, typhoid fever was a massive problem in Ireland, and this was before proper sanitation, so diseases like this ran rife, caused abdominal pain, constipation, headaches, vomiting, uh, people developed skin rashes. In severe cases, people would experience confusion, um, symptoms could last weeks or months without treatment, and uh, also they could have severe diarrhea. In 1865 alone, there were 25,500 deaths from typhoid in Ireland. And typhoid is spread by, this is disgusting, by eating or drinking food or water contaminated with the feces of an infected person. And it resulted in a drive to try and improve the quality of drinking water, particularly in cities where typhoid would just spread like wildfire. People were fed up drinking poopy, ploppy water. Something had to be done. So a suggestion was made that you should depopulate all the water catchment areas. And that's pretty much the place where the rain would fall, flow down from the hills into the river, and then that river would be tapped or piped uh, for drinking water. The idea was that if no people or animals lived within those valleys that fed down into those rivers, you're gonna reduce the chances of getting feces in the water that might contain typhoid. And as a result, people would be a lot more healthy. And you know, it did work. But the problem was, if you were unfortunate enough to live in those areas, you could lose your home. You could lose the place that you'd lived for generations. So this area was taken over by the water service and the entire community, as far as we can tell, at least three families, was forced to leave the place that they had lived for potentially generations. And the records that Gary found showed that the people who lived here didn't even own the land. So I don't know if they even got any kind of compensation when they were forced to leave but they lost their homes because of something that happened 50 miles away. And that brings us to the most likely explanation of what these holes were, because shortly after those people had to leave their homes, an investigation was done to find out if they could build a reservoir in the area, dam the entire valley, and create a more permanent source of fresh water. We know this because there are documents and there are records from the time. Thanks once again to Gary. Because in order to build a reservoir, you need to know what's underneath the surface. You need to know what you're going to be digging into. You need to know what the groundwater levels are like, what the bedrock is like. And to do that, you have to dig holes. So we think most likely these are the test holes dug way back, probably around the end of the 1800s to find out if it was viable to build a reservoir in this area. In the end, a reservoir wasn't built, so obviously it wasn't viable, otherwise we would currently be underwater. But Gary managed to get one final bit of evidence, and that was he managed to make contact with someone who worked in this area as a forest worker 
right back in the 1970s and he was out felling trees, thinning trees, and can clearly remember two dangerous deep holes in the ground at that time surrounded by barbed wire and as far as he was concerned they were known to everyone as test holes which now that i say that out loud again <laughs> does sound a little bit <laughs> a little bit like an insult but yeah that's what we think they were test holes for the reservoir maybe not the most exciting explanation in the world but i guess sometimes the truth maybe isn't as exciting as we would like it to be not everything is a conspiracy, although if we're honest, sometimes the conspiracies are a little bit more interesting. But I do have one final way of trying to get confirmation of this because I've emailed the water service, first of all, to let them know the fences are down, they need to rebuild them to make this place safe. And secondly, to see if they will confirm this theory. If they do or they give me any other information, it'll be in a pinned comment on this video. But for now, I've got one final thing that I really need to go and do. Boing.